name is Lycan, and I am from Lycan D's Beat, and you are listening to James Cork's Mustache Show. Wait, no, it's the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 155. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. No. What happened? No. No, bye. What? Okay. what? No, you're too Malaysian for me, man. Too much. I don't want it. You don't like the new format where videos involve? Ah, uh, it would be more visually interesting for the audience if we they could see us. True. But no, we have to do it like this. You have to do, t- try to look into, uh, into it in the future, man. Try to make it more interactive. Put video on the video, not just audio. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. But also... Because it's not that, well, in that case, it wouldn't be a, a, a podcast, it would be a video log. But... Uh, true, true. But, like, we'll take one step at a time, one step at a time. And I also guess. joining us today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Rom. How are you doing, man? I'm doing okay. Doing fine. Totally not want to go into a rant about how much I suck at World of Tanks. Totally not going to go there. Nope. Oh, okay. I, mean, I am completely in control of my game rage, and I'm totally not going to talk for five hours about that guy. <laughs> all right, all right, all I right. I am fully in control of the situation. All right, if you say so. Uh, also joining us today is Puffy Smosh. Wow. <laughs> also, James, what you said, I am the audience right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Puffy, how are you doing? I think I'm getting a bit ill. But oh no. Meh. Meh. Oh no, don't get ill. I cannot control my body. Uh, not gonna go I there. see it limp on the floor. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Repeat that again? So, Do I really have to? No, no, no. Uh, the, the, the thought is going in my mind. I can't control my body. I see it limp on the floor. Does that mean you're a ghost Skyping with us? Yes. Yes, I'm a ghost penguin. Oh. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I always thought that you were a pony. But okay, ghost penguin, I'm going to roll with that. And our guest for this week is returning champion, Lycan. Hello there. Hey there, Lycan. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. See, the problem with video in the Skype call is that uh, if there were to be video, James Cork's mustache would have its own um, show. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could dedicate an entire show to my mustache, despite uh, despite words to the contrary in one of my streams. Actually, it's funny. Somebody got very offended by this. What? You yeah, know, for some reason. You know, talk- uh, I think they couldn't handle the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> T- talking about mustaches, right? I- I'm trying to grow one myself, but it's not looking good. I, I don't know. You what look you like think? you look you look like a teenager Fu Manchu. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, especially with that bandana on your head. Like I said before, I am a bit self-conscious about my forehead. <laughs> yeah, Norman, you know, I don't really care that much because it feels like I'm about to fight a Pokemon trainer or something like that with that on your head. Like, am I about to... What are you, a back catcher not... or a motorbiker? <laughs> you're not off, you're not off. I do have a Pokemon with me right now. Oh, get the... That's not a word! Get out of here. <laughs> Yay, first bomb. Thank you, James. Oh my I've God. been playing Pokemon recently for like a few months, and I still ha- I still need to freaking uh, beat some trainers. But... <laughs> uh, you know, um, usually by this point, I will go. I will go for asking the guests' favorite character and favorite episode. But we, since we have Lycan here on, uh, I think we already know. But you know what? I'm just gonna touch upon it really fast. And Lycan, favorite character, favorite episode. I can't even remember what my answers were in the last time you interviewed me. It was uh, it was so long ago now. <laughs> I, but, uh, I, I do know that your favorite pony is Apple Bloom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it still remains as my favorite character. I think, um, mainly because you know she's always exploring and trying to um, experience new things. And uh, I mean, this all comes because she doesn't have a cutie mark. She's always trying something new. Trying to get out there and trying to find out who she is and what what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. And for favorite episode, uh, favorite episode, um, it would have to be testing testing one two three. Really, such an amazing episode that one. Yeah. So yeah, that um, hasn't changed. Say, uh, here, here I thought you were going to say uh, somebody to watch over me or. 
Ponyville Confidential on or one b- with a big, uh, you know, like a, a, a big presence of Apple Bloom in it, but a non-Apple Bloom episode. Yeah, I think it's because um, it, the episode just rings with me. The fact that every person learns in their own different way and has their own different personality, and uh, it just shows, it just shines in that episode. And of course, it's hilarious watching um, Rainbow Dash rock back and forth <laughs> on the stool. That's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Great seeing that. So technically, what Puffy said haven't changed yet. That's cool. Um, question: Was uh, was the Pinkie Pie rap in uh, in that episode also? Yep, it was. Oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, I still hate it. <laughs> still hate it. Ah, uh, oh, that brings back memories. Yay. <laughs> yes, it does. It's such a great reference. When I saw that, the Pinkie Pie rap, I'm like, that is so 90s. That uh, is fantastic. Yeah. Bring bring back the hammer pants. <laughs> bring back vanilla ice. <laughs> oh, that's like so cool. It, um, like it, I'm still so so surprised that you uh, you see this very, very positive and um, very um, interesting outlook on Apple Bloom, not over, uh, overlooking everything else. That I know, basically. Oh. Uh, I mean, yeah, this, she's had a lot of episodes now and has had a lot of screen time. So, um, and I'm surprised they're still coming out with new things to explore and to uh, try out with uh, the character. So, yeah, she still remains interesting. All right, cool, cool. Let's. Tr- I'm going to try this one. This is something new that is new for this episode, and is going to go. I'm going to call it. What have we been watching this week? It could be reading, watching a movie or an anime or anything in life that you've been doing. Uh, maybe I should call it what have you been doing. But hey, I'm still experimenting with the segment. But James, why don't you start first? What have you been doing? You want to leave me for last. <laughs> I guarantee you. Okay, please, okay. Move on to someone else. Leave me for last. All right, I, please. I, I'm going to go for guests first because the guests of honor. Please tell me what have you been doing this past few week or what? Well, let's see. Uh, just yesterday, I was going through some of the movies and I'm like, I'm sure I've seen Mocking Jay Part 1. I swear I've seen Mocking Jay Part 1. And then I started up like, no, I haven't actually seen it. I knew I'd read the book, but I was like, no, I haven't seen it. So I sat down and started watching it. I'm like, oh, okay. They've actually done quite a good job on Mockingjay, but I don't know. It it just feels as though two parts for Mockingjay, yeah, I don't think it needed it. I thought well, it you know, that is the one. That's, that's the new trend of taking the last book of a series of books and make it two movies, like Harry Potter and the, uh, the, the Hallows and Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1 and Part 2. So, and also The yeah, Hobbit. They like, they like doing that. Well, The Hobbit is kind of like a case apart because making three movies out of a book that was shorter than The Fellowship of the Ring was a bad idea. <laughs> mm. But having said that, I didn't hate it at all. Actually, I quite liked it as a, as a movie. Um, even though I have read the book, yes, of course, the book is always better. <laughs> but um, no, yeah, as a standalone movie, it was actually quite entertaining, and it had all the relevant parts, and it kept you interested from start to finish. All right, cool. you, you're, you're, you're still talking about Mockingjay Part 1, right? <laughs> I am talking about Mockingjay Part 1. Yes, it did yeah, have yeah. some parts where you just bang your head going, come on, bring on the story a little bit <laughs> more. But it, it was still... Overall, it was still pretty good in its own right. I agree. I did. I did watch it as well. Actually, marathon all of the Hunger Games movies, so I could like go watch the last one at the theater. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I I really like many parts of Mockingjay Part One. I'll say that one and uh, what is the second one name? In Flames. Not sure. Oh yeah, um, Catching the Fire. Hunger Game. Yeah, Catching Fire. Fire. Yeah, mm. Catching Fire was good as well. I mm-hmm. like that one. I like those two, yeah. The other thing that I was watching is because, um, for those of you who don't know, PonyCon AU was last week, which was absolutely awesome. But uh, after it was over, my friend and I, um, he's a military guy, uh, he was over at my place because uh, he had a couple of hours to waste before he had to go catch his plane at the airport. So we sat down and we watched the interview. <laughs> oh, my. So here, 
Oh yeah, two military guys watching the interview. We absolutely loved it. <laughs> it was so offensive. It was awesome. <laughs> Do you think that those attacks that uh, Sony suffered were justified after watching the movie, or uh, like you know, do you think it's worth offending over if you yeah. were North Korean? Oh yeah, of course it was justified. But at the same point, if you can't laugh at yourself, then I mean, it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shame because it was so funny, it was so ridiculous that it just made it awesome. <laughs> all right, all right. That is the power of that is the power of Seth Rogen. He's a very good comedian. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Him and uh, Jonah Hill. I know that the protagonist is the other protagonist is uh, James Franco, but Jonah Hill is a much better comedian than James Franco. So yes, yeah, that's what I was watching this week. So you mentioned Pony Corny. You, I, I'm going to leave that for the interview part. But moving on, Ro, what about you, man? The interview in this podcast, not the movie. Yep, true. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be mistaken. Yep, yep. Uh, and Ro, what about well, you, man? What have you been well, watching? Well, as you all know, stuff. Yeah, as you all know, I'm not that big on movies or shows. I'm a gamer when I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. And sure. what I normally do, well, the way I play games, if there's like a series, like one part to like five, I like to play from the very beginning to the very last to see like not just the gameplay but the history of the game's development, like. How it changes in graphics, engines, story, and, you know, just the overall history. And for the latest, I've been playing, well, the last two series I've been playing was Arkham series of Batman. Mm -hmm. That was really nice. There was like, um, well, few changes, but the combat was definitely a bit more intense as the Arkham series advanced. I don't know why people were complaining about Origins. I think Origins was the most intense combat, especially the I boss fight with Firefly. I think people were complaining about Origins because of all the glitches that the video yeah, game has. Yeah, I do remember glitches. that. I don't know what they're talking about. I've seen no glitch. I've well, had the best that, gameplay of my life. That is, that is one... I'm pretty sure Norman is, is going to talk about that one particular glitch where yeah, you are yeah. trying to go into a tower and if you go inside the, the, the room in up. that tower... Yeah, you get trapped in there for yeah, the rest yeah, of the yeah. game. You cannot climb out. You cannot grapple hook your way out of there. And uh, you cannot uh, escape through the vent because the vent is glitched. Yeah, I think Angry Joe reviewed it or something like that. But yeah, Ro, he may, he the reason it. why you're having the best game is it's been out for a while and patches have been coming out for the game for a while now. So you're probably uh, on version 2 point something right now. I don't know. I had the best game. Another series I've been playing was Saints Row. But I started from the second because the first was a console exclusive. And as you all know, PC Master Game breaks for me because I don't have a console yet. So yeah. I played the second game. It was okay. It was ice. You could do this and that. A lot to offer. But the third one was a major improvement. The game was so, the game is so polished. So shiny. So much addition. I was exploding all over the place, man. With nerdgasm. I love that game too, man. I, I played the game twice on consoles and I played it from scratch twice. So that's a testament to that game. Indeed. It's like GTA, only if the developer was on, I don't know, he was definitely on something when he was making that game. <laughs> but I love it. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. And Puffy, what about you? What, how have you been entertaining yourself for this week? Oh man, um, I think I would need to create a very long list because uh, I've been bored this uh, this past week. So, not including um, my students' books mm -hmm. and some other books to help me actually learn stuff in school because it's very, very hard this year. Um, I've been reading Dracula, Ooh. a book that I shouldn't mention because uh, apparently it was on the on a very different shelf, and I picked it up. Sadly, uh, I need to return it. Mm -hmm. On the anime side, I've been watching Girls and Panzer and uh, Ken Cooler. Um, if I remember correctly, the full name was Kentai Collection. It's rather interesting. I love it. Um, what else? I've been watching many shows and I really don't remember all of them. Um, TV shows. Haven't gotten into them for quite a while. And, 
talking about movies. Um, I've seen quite a lot of movies, like Jump Street 21, 22. Um, what else? So many, I can't even remember them. <laughs> so basically, you, you've been entertaining yourself pretty good then. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, now counting the student books, <laughs> which are pretty much boring. All right. Uh, as for myself, besides the Magic the Gathering addiction I have... I've been watching a few shows like Steven Universe, Adventure Time, a few animes here and there. And if you're wondering, it's Jojo Stardust Crusaders and whatnot. But um, here's a fun show that you guys should all watch. It's called Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Oh. And also Pen Zero, Part-Time Hero. Uh, these two shows were done by our good friend, or our good friend worked on it. He's a uh, Lionheart cartoon. He worked huh. on those two animations. And you should really go watch it because it's really fun. Neat. And those two shows are done by Disney. So, yay. Wow. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I've been doing a bit of drawing here and there. But, hey, <laughs> save my life. Magic the Gathering all the way, I guess. Also, thank you for that picture. Jesus, I was so, su- so surprised. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Puffy. You, you've been doing a lot of art for us, so thank you. It's so. my job. It's my favorite <laughs> podcast. Duh. All right, all right. And Man of the Hour, James, why don't last? Call man, don't call me Man of the Hour, because I want to, like, uh, I, I, I have done a lot of things, actually. I have been super busy with commissions. I managed to get... Uh, four movie slates completed and uh, another two sketched out. Um, I just finished a picture as I am recording this podcast with you guys and uh, did the sketch of three more, actually, which is um, a poker card project that I'm doing with the guy who does Little Miss Rarity. Mm -hmm. Uh, Good project, good idea, terrible communication. He's proving out to be one of those clients that, okay, I leave you the picture there and three days later comes back and says yeah it looks good so he likes everything he's like rainbow dash in in, in suited for success <laughs> uh i have been rekind- rekindling my love of mass effect by playing the first one all right i forgot how terrible the fighting system is in that video game <laughs> like the shooting parts i love the dialogue and i love the action but when it comes to the gameplay part it's such bullcrap. The things that you have to deal with. Uh, changing ammunition is a pain in the ass. It's not so easy as in two and third. You have to go to the menu and change the ammunition manually. Wow. All right. Yeah, uh, bad. And um, movie, uh, but I, of course, I'm the movie guy because, and I've been watching a lot of movies. Uh, like I said before, I, be, I uh, have watched the the Hunger Games, uh, the the three Hunger Games movies that are out. I watched Divergent which was very awkward. Uh, I watched Whiplash, which oh. is a fantastic movie. Uh, very hard to watch. Very, it's, it's a very tough movie, but you guys could enjoy it if you like music and you know what it's like to sacrifice parts of your life for uh, your art or the thing that you like to do. And uh, But the best movie that I watched recently is a movie called Nightcrawler uh, mm-hmm. that starts Jake Gyllenhaal. Which is about the newscasters and how they make the, how they, they manage to obtain that footage of people getting shot or people in car accidents or like, you know, the, the whole accidents and, mm-hmm, and murder mm-hmm. scenes. And it takes place in Los Angeles. And it is a fantastically well shot, well done, very well performed movie. And you should definitely gotta give it a watch. It's one of the films that surprised me the most. And I think that's it. I have a pile of movies right behind me that you cannot see because this show has no video. But if I could show you, you'd see there are like 15 movies in here and I didn't bought any of them. They all came from fans that saw my wish list and, and said, hey, I'm gonna buy him something. And there you go. Wow, that's awesome. Well, the most expensive movie was like four pounds. So I guess. Yeah, you you know, not big, not not uh, not a big expense. It's cool. It's cool. You have, uh, you have very, um, oh, what was the word? Um, like that, your your followers on Ask Movie Slate and your commissioners are very dedicated and loyal to you, which is uh, which I find very very awesome. They are unbelievable. These guys are unbelievable. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. And it's funny, 
because before they 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 couldn't send the movies that they want me to review. But now, if I haven't watched the movie, they get it for me on DVD. Wow. <laughs> Which it, it blows my mind. My mind is like now I have no excuse to watch terrible found footage movies and <laughs> horrible horrible horror films that are more laughable than they are scary. <laughs> so, oh dear. So yeah, that's what I've been doing this week. They, they, I wanted to be put at the end because I knew that I was going to talk for a while. It's cool. I'm sorry. And yeah, that's this segment. I, I hope you guys like it. And what do you think, man? Like everyone here, what do you think? Was it good? Was it too long? Or should we skip this one near the end? I don't know. Well, I guess it's a way for you to make the the the, the podcasters closer. Hmm? Okay, cool, cool. And I don't know. saying what they do on a on a weekly basis. I think I like it, but it has nothing to do, to do with ponies. So yeah, but, but since we yeah. I do enjoy this kind of thing where we share our opinions and feelings. Yay! As a dedicated fan of the NBA show, <laughs> and him, um, actually, my thoughts are that I agree with James. Um, I feel a teensy bit closer to the podcast like this, and um, yeah, keep it on. Just all right, cool. We'll, no we'll improve. We'll improve the tempo <laughs> later on. We'll improve the tempo later on. But anywho, talking about sharing. Ro, we have something that every free North West want to share, right? Uh, yes, and it's a long list. Yep, yep. We're ready for it. Before that, Oi. you gotta share, you gotta care, <laughs> it's the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Alright. And that has been the musical segment with Puffy Smash. Back to you, Norman. Yay. <laughs> uh, housekeeping, go for it, man. Alright, every free North West announcement, con book art contest. The Everfree Northwest convention book is in need of a cover. And who better than the amazingly talented artist of the MLP fan community to create it? That's why we are opening up the opportunity to create the official cover for this essential guide to the Everfree Northwest 2015 experience. Details can be located on our website at everfreenw.com slash events slash art dash contest and below. We are expecting cover designs as of now and will be accepting submissions until April 24th, 2015. If you win our grand prize, your submission will be the front cover of the Everfree Northwest 2015 con book. You will also receive a complimentary Everfree Northwest standard three-day pass for you or a friend. Refunds may be given if you have already purchased a badge, as well as having a print of your design sold at the Everfree Northwest con store, where you will receive 50% of the profits gained from its sale. We will also be awarding two second and third place prizes, who will each also receive a complimentary, complimentary <laughs> Everfree Northwest standard three-day pass for you or your friend. Again, you may receive a refund if you already purchased the badge. Artwork will also be featured within our con book and on the Everfree Northwest social media outlets, as well as sold at an Ever, Everfree Northwest con store, where you will receive 50% of the profits. We will also have several honorable mentions who will have their artwork featured in our con book. For more information, please check out the show notes. All right, cool. So it looks like Everfree Northwest is holding a contest where you can win a three-day pass to go to their con. Yay! So, James, interested? You want to you win? Um, <laughs> you know, It will be great, but I have already too much on my plate, and I don't mean about commissions. I'm actually getting very, uh, my commission queue very cleared up, but... I'm also doing the Tumblr Pwn Swap contest oh. for April Fools. <laughs> uh, I am doing uh, the Fan Fiction Challenge for Equestria Daily that is going to be um, is going to go live in a couple of days oh, cool. from the from this recording. And I have uh, I have my personal projects. Besides, I have to prepare my portfolio, which I haven't started on, by the way. But I have to start preparing that, um, so I can have something ready by the end of the year. So I can present to companies. And it has to be pony free, or at least partially pony free. But yeah. Awesome, so awesome, no, awesome. I cannot I cannot take on more. Sorry everyone. Here's cool. What about you, Ru? Well, it would be nice, but that's only the pass. I still need a ticket for the hotel, ticket for the plane, and cetera, et cetera. Which means nope, I'm out. Aww. There's no point. Alright. What about you, Buffy? First of all, uh good luck, James. Thank that's you. a lot. That's a lot. Uh, two, I would actually try and, um, and make the cover art because I'm actually interested in this. Um, and this would actually, 
um, ki- I would kind of try and um, <laughs> and show my parents, yeah, I won this ticket. Can we go to America now? <laughs> Can we go to a PonyCon, please? Please, please. <laughs> it probably I- won't work, but it's still something to try. If, if not... Uh, you can actually say that you you can't make it and uh, give it back, so it's fine. True. Or you could give it to someone else who is in the area. True. So anywho, I think every free Northwest. Thank you for thinking of us and people who are interested. There's there like go ahead and try your best, man. Like you'll get fifty percent of the fundings or the what you call this? What they say. 50% of the profit. profit. So, yeah. So, yeah, go try. It's not, it's, it's not that bad. If you win, you get 50%. Yay. So, anyway, uh, moving on, we have Lycan here. And Lycan, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Alrighty. So, I am Lycan. Uh, I'm Australian. And I do a weekly podcast called Like and D's Beats. It's a two-hour radio show that um, airs on canterlothill.com, and it's all about music. We bring you the latest songs of the fandom, as well as the greatest songs of the fandom. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, your show is called Like and D's Beats? Yes, Lycan D's Beats. Um, so the co-hosts are myself, Lycan, and Fritzy Beat. Speak. And so when we were coming up with the show name, I'm like, hey, we should just call it Lycan D's Beats. And Fritzy Beats like, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and so that's how the name for the show was made. So wait, it's you're, just one you're really saying, bad pun. So you're saying that the show has the both of you, like Lycan and Fritzy Beats, but just minus Fritzy and just call it Lycan and Lycan D's Beats. Beats that's yeah. right. <laughs> it's one very, very bad pun. But it's awesome at the same time. Uh, it goes to show, and it it makes it um, even more legendary. Your power to bend the English language to your will. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, oh, that's just awesome, man. That's just awesome. So you, you said that you play on the new station called Cantalot Hill. So how how did the whole idea start, man? Well, um, it's actually took a long time to get the show up and running. I had had the concept for the show in about November of 2014. And um, that's when I came up with the idea of the show. And I was like, huh, all right, I'll need a co-host. So I was chatting to Fritzy B. And I'm like, hey, um, do you want to do a radio show? And he says, like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Because I myself know how to broadcast. And I've done a little bit of um, radio show myself, but I know almost nothing about music. Whereas Fritzy Beat, he isn't so um, knowledgeable on how to broadcast and sound edit and things like that, but he knows a lot about music. So we actually complement each other on on that. Um, so like I mentioned, it's been in concept phase since about November of 2014, but the first episode didn't go to air until uh, late January. So it was about a three-month period from concept to actually having our first episode. And during that time, it was trying to figure out what the the show was going to be about, what to feature on the show, um, what to do on the show, and my alarm just went off. (laughs) That was loud. Uh, Yes, it is um, almost 2 a.m. for me, so that's why the alarm went off. Sorry about that. Uh, So, yeah. Um, it took about three months to have our first episode from First Concept. Hmm, all right. So, I've been on your podcast or show on the chats and whatnot and listening to it. And uh, there, there's an interesting thing that I noticed where you were doing the show live, but at the same time, you were chatting with us in the Skype via voice, like what we're doing right now. And how do you guys work the work behind the scenes? Um, some of it is uh, pre-recorded, so we do have our script and things like that. And some of it's pre-recorded, but some of it's just there's no script. It's we just 
go off it and uh and we just talk back and forth so um as part of the show i normally have some kind of game show happening and i'll have say three questions i want to ask fritzy and for example what the first week was a uh true or false and so i was asking him questions about the show and uh i think one of the questions was uh true or false daniel ingram was referenced 14 times in the credits of magical mystery cure rock and so fritzy doesn't actually know the answer it's like oh 14 times that's a lot of times but i mean there are a lot of songs in, Ma- in magical mystery cure um um uh i think it's true <laughs> So that part of it is completely off the cuff. That is not scripted at all. Uh, so yeah, there are some segments like the introduction, which um, we pre-record. And so that part will be uh, set to, we'll, we'll have that as part of the song playlist. Mm, all right. All right. And Puffy, you have a question? Yes. Um, first of all, um, you have this podcast, right? And because I haven't been to it, uh, could you tell me when, uh, at what time do you actually do it? Uh, it goes live at 2 p.m. EST uh, on a Saturday. So we are recording this on a... Sunday? About, yeah, we are recording this on um, about two hours before my show is meant to be going to air. <laughs> I would so just say wibbly uh, wobbly timey wimey stuff. Eh, oh, wibbly wobbly. Not, <laughs> uh, then also so bingle yes. bongle dingle dangle yikidi do yikidi da ping pong lippy tatty uh, lippy tappy tuta. Oh no, puppy has been possessed by the spirit of Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> but yes, yeah, very wibbly wobbly. Uh, so for me, it actually goes to air at 5 a.m. on a Sunday. Oh, but man. um for everyone else it's two PM EST, uh, EST and it goes for two hours. Uh and it focuses around music. So there's actually not a lot of Fritzy and I talking. Um there's still a lot of entertainment. Um a lot of the actual chatter between the listeners and Fritzy and I comes from the IRC chat. So if you don't know, that's um a text based chat where everyone can talk. So Fritzy and I um, are usually on the Candlelight Hill IRC. And people will be like, oh, this song's awesome. And we say, yeah, yeah, we really like this song. Or um, one time we had a, a Valentine's Day special. And so as part of that, we did shout-outs. And so people on the IRC chat saying, oh, can you do a shout-out to my mom? Or can you do a shout-out to this person? And so... Um, sometime during the show, I'm like, hey, we had a message from this person saying, oh, thank you, mum, for everything that you've done. Uh, just like Rom. Rom does his shout out all the time to <laughs> his mum. Anyway, um, so yeah, th- that's how we interact. Um, even though we, uh, have the radio show, rather than having callers as per normal um, radio show. We have the people talking to us via the IRC, and it's a great way to communicate and keep things interesting. Oh, cool, cool. I, I do remember that during the IRC chat where uh, people were requesting songs like, hey, play more Discord and stuff. So all they have to do was just request it in the IRC, ping you and say, hey, play more Discord, and you'll do it, something like that? Yeah, there is a uh, there is a request part of the show. So that's where people can um, log on to the IRC and request songs. And they'll be like, hey, I want to hear this song on the radio. And so um, we do have that request part of the show. And that, that's where the greatest songs of the fan come in. People want to hear their own music. They want to be like, yeah, I heard this song. It was awesome. And they want to share it with people. So that's why there's a request part of the portion of the show. The other part of the show is the latest songs of the fandom. So I take the songs from about the past week or so, and um, that's what makes up an entire hour. Mm. An entire hour of the show um, is just playing the new songs, the songs that have only just been released. Uh, mm. People may not know about them yet. They haven't even heard of the artist, but um, they're very, very new, and so we like to showcase a lot of the new stuff. 
How do you get the songs? Like, do people submit it to you or do you hunt them down? No, people just post them up on YouTube. And uh, so we find them from there. And usually they have either a, f- a link to their song or something like that. And then I get them, I'll cue them up, and I'll play them on the radio. Like for this week, I've had about almost two hours of just new music. So I've had oh, to wow. cut out a lot of the songs just to cut it down to about one hour. So like, an, um, here's here's a serious question for me because... I too do almost the same thing on my show where I hunt down new music and put it at the end of the show. But I, I'm always have this, sorry, I always have this thing where I don't pick a song where if the artist wants me to buy it. Because if I play it on my show, I don't feel right. It's, I feel like I'm stealing the song. So what about you? How do, how do you do things? Like if a song is, for purchase, would you just take it and play it on your show, or you would just skip it? Well, I mean, if I were to buy every single song that required a purchase, I would probably go broke by about three episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've actually got a connection with a lot of the fandom musicians uh, through Fritzy. Mm-hmm. So I'll actually say to them, hey, look, I'm interested in playing your song on my show. Um, can can you send it to me? And if you'd like, you can even record a bumper for it. So I've got had musicians record a bumper for their song, be like, hey, this is Sayonara Maxwell, and you're listening to Like and D's Beats, and this is my new song, uh, Cupcakes. Hmm. So right. they'll actually record that and send me the song. And so I benefit because I get to play the music on the radio and they benefit because they get to do a shout out to their own music. And so people are like, Oh, Hey, I really like this song. Oh, I know who it was by. And, um, so they get to go to onto the YouTubes and follow the person whose song it was. Mm, okay. So when it comes to the artists where you play their songs, do you link them to their page or do you have a method where people know where to find them? Well, when I actually play the song, it actually has the song name in the uh, information. Mm -hmm. So as the song is playing, anyone can actually look at the broadcast and be like, oh, hey, this song is playing. Um, Or, oh, that song's playing. And so while it's playing, people can actually look at that broadcast, find out what the song's called who the songs by and then look it up on YouTube to find out um, more about them and uh, maybe even follow them or listen to some of their other songs that are available. Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, anyone else? James, Rowe, Puffy? When it comes to your show, what are your do's and don'ts? Like, what would you say, okay, this is as far as I'd go when it comes to music or when it comes mm. to content for uh, for the show? Mm. Um, I'll actually tell you a very funny story about the concept of the show. We had some, a lot of ideas. We we're like, yeah, we'll have like a role playing segment. We'll have characters doing something and we'll have a weekly, um, like a, a weekly segment about a story. And so I have to follow it every week. And we had this and that, and we had all these ideas written down. And we actually spoke to someone who'd been doing radio shows for a while. <clears throat> and we said, all right, look, here's a lot of our ideas. And they're like, no, just take one or two ideas and stick with them. It's much, much better to be great at two things rather than just meh at, say, six things. Yeah. Don't so, spread like, your talents. Your, don't spread your talents thin. Keep them focused. Just like this show. Oh, yeah. So, um... Yeah, that was during the concept phase. We had to scrap like three or four ideas, and so we stuck with uh, three main ideas. Part one was to have a theme. So, spoilers, but um, this week's theme is actually Luna. So we've got five songs lined up, which all revolve around Luna. Hmm. Um, so we've got Pony Phonics, Lullaby for a Princess. We've got Dongle Kumquats, a song about Luna. Um... We've got uh, Mike the Microphone and Adam the Walkers, uh, Wary of the Night. So that's the theme. 
each week has a different theme. So for example, last week, uh, it was PonyCon AU. So I had the theme of convention songs. So we're playing things like Discord and Nightmare Nights, <laughs> very much songs that you'd want to hear at a convention. The week before that was Valentine's Day. So we're playing love songs. Uh, so we've got that weekly theme, which goes on and it's um, unique to every episode. So that's one part. The second part is requests. So we take requests from the chat. Um, so people say, I want to hear this song or that song. And so that'll be queued up. So there's a half hour theme. Then there's a half hour request. And then there's a full hour of new music. So that's what we specialize in. The fandom's latest and greatest songs. Would you say that this fandom uh, has more types of one type of music than others? Or will you say it's very eclectic? Like how difficult it is for you to come up with... Uh, uh, like when you have a theme already, uh, how difficult it is for you to find music that caters to that theme? Mm. Um, finding music that caters to a theme is very, very easy. Um, so for example, Luna, there's a lot of songs about Luna. Um, of love songs. She's best princess. Plenty of them. So you got Big Brother Best Friends. Uh, you've got, uh, My Cadence. So they're all love songs or songs that deal with love. So it's very, very easy to fill up, uh, a theme. So, like it, I'm not sure if this is in the future or this is right for your show, <laughs> but, um, but do you have plans to invite guest hosts on your show? Of course, yeah, we're looking at doing that. So that will probably be part of the theme part. So if we have a guest on, we'll say like, yeah, hi, this is guest blah, and we'll do like a very quick interview, like who are you, what do you do? <laughs> and then we'll ask, so the fandom has a lot of music, what kind of music has inspired you? And so they'll say, oh, this song's inspired me, and then we'll play it. And we'll also ask like, oh, this song, uh, this was one of my first songs that I listened to in the fandom. And then we'll play that for them. So, um, yeah, we definitely have an, a, a plan to get some guests on the show. And that would actually make up the theme for that week. Mm, of cool, cool. this is what songs inspired them. This is where they take their inspiration from. Um, that's been a big influence for them. Or here's something that they really, really like and would like you to hear. So it's definitely, definitely a possibility for Like and Deeds Beats. All right. So I'm, I'm guessing that you only play pony related songs or from pony artists but have you ever gotten a request where someone asks for hey play freebird i don't even know what freebird is but um <laughs> uh we do play non-pony music so i do have a song lined up uh, which is about five nights at freddy's Oh, so okay. that's by Sayonara Maxwell and Micro Thunder. Sure, they may be pony musicians, but the song itself is definitely not a pony song. So would your show be okay if you were to play something from Aerosmith, or is that a big no-no for you? That's copyrighted, and um, that's a that's a problem with internet radio, is that mm. you then have to start paying royalties to the um, people that mm. have it. The, the song's done by pony musicians... They're usually free license, so uh, you can play them um, without any any worry at all. Yeah, without having to concern about copyright and coming to you saying you have to you have been flagged, you have been sent a fine, or hey, now you have to pay us money if you want to have this song there. Mm. They, that's something that I never understood. They should be them paying you for promoting their music for free, but now uh, everything is um, a means to get money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, it that's kind of also makes sense considering um, it's not actually me that would get in trouble. I mean, of course, I'd get in trouble as well. But it's also the radio station that would get in trouble for playing yeah. copyrighted music. And that's a bit bigger than a single show on a single day <laughs> at 2 p.m. EST on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So anyone else got any questions? I think I'm dry right now, question-wise. Right. Sorry, I couldn't think of anything um, anything better. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, Puffy? I would say that Lycan touched upon every single thing that I could think of, so good job, Lycan. <laughs> all right, all right. Ro, you have a question? Yeah, have you spoken to any of the musicians, like, on a personal level? Oh, yeah, definitely. 
Um, Fritzy Beat himself is a musician. Um, Sayonara Maxwell is from um, Russia, so I've spoken to him. He's uh, given me a couple of songs. Vasis Love is an Australian musician. Um, I've played some of his stuff. Uh, he's got a great song called Tis a Lie. It's all about Luna being on trial for gobbling Pip's bottom. <laughs> nice. So you definitely get a wide variety of musicians and songs, and it's just great talking to them. Um, so Micro Thunder is very much another one that I've chatted to. He's um, very German. Um, there's people from all over the world that I've speak, spoken to, all these musicians, and I'll just be like, hey, can you send me a bumper? And they're like, yeah, it's cool, man. I'll do that. All right. Cool, cool. Yep. Is there anything that you want to talk about, like, and that we might have overseen? Like, I don't know, like how you do the video, how you do the, the podcasting or the editing process, anything that you may consider interesting uh, or worth uh, bringing up? Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I started off with some free broadcasting software, um, which was great. Um, it's called But. <laughs> the program is literally called But. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um. So I started off with that, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, but I very quickly outgrew it. And I very quickly realized that I would have to fork out some money to get some proper broadcasting software. Um, so there is a little bit of money that actually goes into doing podcasts and stuff. So I use one called Sam Broadcaster. Now, this is where I can queue up my songs and transition from one to the other, go live, various things like that. So it's much more user-friendly with regards to broadcasting compared to but. If if you want to start, go for it. There are free stuff out there, but um, you might notice, like I did, that you will soon outgrow it. So how much was it, and is it a yearly contract? Um, I bought it for $150. US. Um, the normal price is $300. US. But I got it as part of a Black Friday sale in about December of last year. And so they had like, yeah, you're 50% off. So I was like, yes, I need to get it now. And that's when I bought the uh, program. And they give you free updates for a year and then license to use it after that. So it's a yearly update then? Yeah, so it gives me the free updates for the year. And then once the year is over, then I can use it in its current state. And then, so you don't need to renew the license or anything like that? Um, if I want the updates, yes, I will have to renew the license. Mm, all right, so you still can use it, but you won't be getting any updates then? Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, that's a cool software. Like, if you're into the broadcasting scene, that's something affordable. Yeah, but um, there are plenty of other broadcasting software out there. This is just the one that I um, decided to use and went for. All right, cool, cool. And anyway, thank you, Lycan, for coming on and, well, sharing your stories because I <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was really awesome just to hear you talk about your show, Lycan This Beats. Mm. Lycan yeah. This not, Beats. It has to have the swag. Not, not, not Lycan like This Pan. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone was uh, sick of the pun by about the second episode. But, uh, it's... <laughs> I just can't go without puns. Yeah, it, it kind of explains the entire premise of the show just in its name. It tells you who's in it, it and what funny. it's about. So it, it, although it's an incredibly bad pun, it's quite informative as the name goes. Um, I'll just give you an idea about what um, goes on with the show. So at the moment, I've got my playlist set up, and the playlist is about an hour and a half long. Um, add in some talking and stuff like that. That makes it about an hour and 40 minutes. So that leaves about 20 minutes for people to send requests um, uh, and for me to play that. So it is two hours long, and it has to be a strict two hours long because as soon as I finish at 4 p.m. EST, Someone else comes on the radio and takes over, and uh, that's a, a DJ, so he mixes his own music. So the the radio show has a, a wide variety of shows that go on, and I'm just one of them. And, uh, yeah, I kind of do have to stick to that strict two-hour time limits. Um, occasionally I've gone over, but 
I've had to ask the person in front of me, be like, hey, do you mind if I go over by five minutes or so? And usually they're like, yeah, sure, no problem, because um, my show's been delayed or something like that. So um, keeping to that strict two-hour time limit is sometimes difficult, but um, it also means that I can't just put everything in and say, oh, whoops, sorry, overtime went three hours. <laughs> All right, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So, anyway, Lycan, do you think you can join us for news time? Yeah, of course. Awesome, awesome, oh, that awesome. Would be interesting. And Puffy, do you think you can join us for news time? Sadly, I don't think so, because <sighs> one is school, two is family, and everything else. So, uh, no. It's okay, Puffy. Well, I guess you'll be missing out on the part where James scream at stuff. Oh, god damn it. No, he won't. He'll be too busy sleeping from all my reading. <laughs> you will be able to hear it from there, Puffy. Don't worry. Actually, silly enough, I'm probably one of the, uh, one of the persons who doesn't fall asleep when Rom is, uh, when Rom is reading, because I find it interesting. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So it's not, it's not, it's not the content what's boring is his voice. That's the thing. It's true. No, stupid. I like his voice! Uh, but, but anyway, Why don't you get everything done at once? Just take the podcast and your family to school. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> if I That's had no school, tell. if uh, I had school at six uh, at um, half past six p.m. Uh, p.m. <laughs> That's too late. But anywho, Puffy, where can they find you? Where can they find you? Um. Probably you can find me on my DeviantArt because that's pretty much the only place where you can find me. Well, if you're a stalker, you can search me on Google and you will see other stuff. <laughs> but um, I am on DeviantArt at puffysmarsh.deviantart.com and I do commissions. Yay, awesome. I, I've reopened them. Awesome, awesome. Do you have the tumblers? Uh, I do, but um, my my... I'm pretty much reblogging stuff, and um, my Ask Pony Tumblr that I have, I it's still in construction because, yeah, it just needs to be remade. All right, cool, cool. I'll just put everything the, into the show notes just to be safe. No. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, Puffy, thank you for coming on, and thank you for hosting. It it was fun. No, thank you, because um. It's it's a, it's always an honor to be on my favorite podcast. Yay, and it's always fun to have the, a fan on. Yay. Yep. Um, before I go, I want to make a shout out to the NBA show. Because <laughs> um, the thing is, you featured my art and you asked for a commission. Um, literally, I had two commissions when I started uh, my commissions. And one of them was Norman's for the NBA show. So I'm happy, thankful. Thank you. No problem. I'm glad that you spend the money all on chocolate. Yeah. No one needs to know that. (laughs) Uh, Is it sad truth? (laughs) Anyway, uh, we'll speak to you soon, Bobby. We'll speak to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye bye. See ya. Have fun. See ya. Will do. Bye, Puffy. Bye bye. Bye, I hate you. (laughs) Okay. Uh, okay. You're a jerk, Lycan. <laughs> we love you too, Puffy. <laughs> it's now. In case you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen, he's showing up a huge box of chocolates. Mm-hmm. You're crying, my sleep. Goodbye. All right. Bye, bye, Puffy. See ya. See ya. So, anyway, with that, Ro, I think it's news time, and it's your time to shine. <clears throat> but of course. <laughs> And in today's news time, what exactly happened to the hub? Former employee chimps in for ad week, plus some extra insights into Hasbro's current plans. From the very beginning, the hub had some gargantuan expectations to fill. According to the ad week article, Hasbro already felt like they had invested too much into the joint project with Discovery early on. In a world that is rapidly migrating to the internet for their entertainment, a new network aimed at a demographic that is already struggling in some of the established media companies out there was a challenge, to say the least. Despite this, the hub has still, was still growing, and a former employee dropped the specifics. Cable networks take time, explains the insider. It was growing at a reasonable rate, but it was only making 9 millions a year. Before the sale, Hasbro is a toy company. 
They didn't know how to run a cable network, and Discovery was a AWOL the entire time. They'd considered Hasbro first among equals because they'd paid so much for it. Another issue was the actual ad revenue. Since Hasbro was competing toy company, both Mattel and Lego, the juggernauts in the industry, were unwilling to display their products on the channel. Not an ideal situation for any network looking to make big bucks. The final name in the coffin was Discovery being much more interested in dealing with the own network at the time. These issues combined to see Hasbro pulling out of out when the chance of buyout appeared. And we now have a pony on the new Discovery family instead. With all Spark Studio appearing to pump out the movies for all Hasbro's IP and their new focus on scannable QR codes to play the soon-to-be-released mobile game, we will probably see a continued push for the digital world. At the end of the day, Hasbro's media site is primarily focused on selling their lucrative and well-established merchandise business. So whatever gets them the most views is good in their book. Links can be found in the show notes below. So, yeah, I mean, we were all wondering what happened to has uh, the hub and looks like we got our answer here and who who would have thought that discovery did not pitch in i would really it only makes yeah. sense i mean sooner than later they were going to go and say uh guys we have to make money out of this like a tv channel has to it cannot be self sustained the money from the toys isn't paying for this for this TV channel. We need to get the revenue from somewhere else. And if you notice, that's why they were pushing the gag commercials so much in the <laughs> season three finale. That practically every commercial was gag. Um, and that's why lately they have been so very weird out of nowhere. Uh, commercials during the last episodes of season four were all, if you notice, everything was Hallmark. <laughs> everything was Hallmark. Everything was... um. Oh, happy family times from Hallmark. <laughs> That's because they couldn't afford any other um any other announcers. So I don't think they couldn't afford. I think nobody really want to put their ads there. Like like the article says, um Lego did a one two Mattel even did a one two. It's of a competing course. company brand. So yeah, it's understandable. And Mattel point. is the competition, True. after all, especially now with uh, with Equestria Girls taking over um, Monster Monster High's uh, turf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen, and well, at least at least we have an answer here of why certain things happen. And eh, I I won't say that this is a good thing, but eh, you know, it's an answer. And still, the Discovery family wants to push out ponies, so that's still good. How are they not going to want to push out ponies? It's one of their biggest cash cows. True, true. If not, the, if not their biggest cash cow. Yeah, but here's another thing: like Transformers, the new Transformers R.E.D. Red. Oh, was it Transformers Red? Give me a second. I, I think there's a new Transformers out, and it's called Transformers Red, and it's airing on. The Cartoon Network. So uh, either they don't, either they know that they won't get much cash from Transformers, or they didn't, uh, or they were too slow in getting the rights to publish Transformers. There is no way they will not be able to uh, publish Transformers. It's their property. Well, Discovery didn't want it, I guess. Looks like Cartoon Network got it first. Possibly, be, possibly because I don't know. Transformers doesn't cater to their uh, morals standards. I don't know. Discovery. I can actually, see, yeah, I can actually see Discovery wanting to have ponies more than Transformers because, in one way or another, I'm not sure about Transformers, but ponies kind of has better morals going for them, mm. or at least a better message. I don't know. Or bigger money. Mm. <laughs> Well, it is, it is, it, it, it's been rumored, I'm not sure how certain this is, but it's been rumored that after season five, they are going to try and go to another TV channel, so. Huh. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. If, I mean... if, if Cartoon Network picks them up, I don't think that will be a bad thing. True. Uh... I, can t- I can totally imagine ponies being in Cartoon Network after all. It's, mm. you have to remember this is that MLP has been on the hub for all of its run. It is the one show 
of the original shows that were premiered on there that managed to stay, that it, it outlived the channel. The hub is no more, but MLP keeps going. Because now the hub is Discovery, Disco, uh, Discovery Family. So, uh, Down Versus, gone. Pound Puppies, gone. Transformers Prime, gone. MLP is the only one that still stands. I mean, if that goes to prove anything is that MLP is going to keep going for as long as it, it's, uh, it exists. True, 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 true. Yeah. And, Ro, you were saying? Um, just a thing about Card Network and shows being cancelled there as well. Then again, MLP is very strong at where it is, so I guess that won't be a problem. Well, I think you're thinking of the shows that Cartoon Network produce. This is just only, uh, what you might call this? Um, license. Re- uh, yeah, license thing. The distribution. Yeah, distribution. Yeah. Yeah, it will be like, um, like, you know how sometimes you see the logos before the movies and, it will be like DreamWorks produced and 20th, 20th Century Fox produces. Like usually is DreamWorks the ones that produce it and 20th Century Fox the ones that uh, publish. promote it, mm. publish it. Yeah. So this is the same thing. I mean, it will be produced by uh, Hasbro and DHX Media, but it's published by Cartoon Network. So mm. there are way, way worse channels to go to. Believe true, me. True, 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 true. Like, what, what do you think, man? What do you think? Well, it makes commercial business sense for them. I mean, they had the hub, and it was pretty much only Hasbro who had their products on it. There was no Mattel. There was no Lego. Um, so from a business point of view, it makes sense to actually scrap it and um, go elsewhere. Hmm. It does make sense that way if you think about it. Yeah, because, I mean, no one else was advertising on this except for pretty much Hasbro and a couple of other um, companies. So most of their revenue would come from ads and things like that. So as a distribution network, it makes sense. Hmm. True, true. I just don't know. It's sad, of course, because you'd like to see the hub continue because it's always been MLP only on the hub. <laughs> so it... It it would be nice from a nostalgia point of view to see it continue, but from business perspective, I think the move is a good thing. I support I support that as well. More exposure means more clients, means means more uh, uh life lifespan for the license. Mm, true that, true that. I mean, one of the reasons one of the reasons why we should keep buying the official merchandise is because it gives money to Hasbro that gives enough money for them to keep producing the show. So in the end you are feeding the show back. Let's just not overfeed. Yeah, that's the my that's well, my one of my concerns. But that's because that... you are against this. You are anti-establishment. I'm very flippant about those things. <laughs> from I have a MLP merchandise and I, I I buy the I I buy the comics and I will buy the TV show when they finally release it on DVD in my country, <laughs> which they haven't yet. But yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I I think I talked about this on yeah. last week's show where. We need to support Hasbro, yeah, the, the official release, release, because by supporting them, they'll support us in a, some way or another. Yeah. Support the official release, or else this is going to be gone before you can even mm-hmm, notice. True. Yes. And that's what's happening with Steven Universe right now. They're not making any sales, and the show could get hammered, so fans oh, are rising. Steven Universe is really awesome. I like it. I know, but they're yeah, not selling they, much. Do, do they yeah, have toys? It's starting to close down. I have no idea, man. I've heard there's they something not comics. going. They have comics and they have the the the, the series on DVD, but uh, or they are going to be. Yeah, they actually released the, the TV show on DVD, but they didn't yeah. promote it. They didn't say, "Oh, hey, we have released a couple of DVD collections with uh, the episodes mm-hmm. out." They didn't say that because apparently they are not interested in the show making no. doing good for. Whatever that's, reason that's, there is. That's backwards. Okay. Do you, do you guys remember The Legend of Korra Season 3? The one where um, Avatar, Korra, something, something, something? Oh, yeah. that was okay. great. Um, that show itself got um, almost got cancelled or almost didn't make it because Nickelodeon thought that, hey, we didn't want to push money in this into this. Because if you notice, uh, in that season has only 13 episodes. Which is really short for a TV series kind of show, except if you're in Japan, which is practically normal. But 
for season three, Korra, only 13 episodes. And if I do remember right, it was aired online. So it says a lot about how um, companies are really aiming for big bucks instead of um, aiming it for the fans. True that, true that. Well, usually when you release something online without the company, uh, well, without the, a production company that puts it on a TV channel, you have a lot more control over your own creation, which can be good, but it can also be bad. You usually want to have an executive being on your side. Because, yeah, you can be as artistic and as free as you want to be, but sometimes you want to follow the charts and say, okay, I can do whatever I want, artistically speaking, but I have to make this appealing to people. How do I know that? And that's where you get the mm. analysts. Maybe that's why some shows that uh, that go online do badly, because they don't know who to cater yeah, I mean, to. Th- those are always hard. Those are always hard. But anyway, yeah. um, Ro, take us out for news time. And this has been News Time with your host with the very least most. Relicious. Back you, to you, Norman. Thank you. And I noticed that that was the only news for this week. I have been slacking off. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Well, dude, there hasn't been very big news out there. Remember, hiatus. We just, we are hurting for everything. We are hurting for new content. We are hurting for new every. They, they even delayed oh, the comics. No, no, the... Because apparently there was a problem yeah, with the shipment the, the, or there something. There was I don't know. Um, a dispute in the ports or something like that and it's not only for pony comics it's for everything like even magic the gathering cards like yeah yeah but hey um blame blame the blame the gotham strike of uh post office that has that's going on as yeah there 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 was a strike on on post offices I, i don't know what it was but Apparently, it affected a big chunk of uh, of the U.S. and it's also happening wow. here in Spain. There are a bunch of packages not being sent uh, in in the airports wow. of my country. So yeah, I I bought the comics and I'm pretty sure they are sitting there, <laughs> not going right, anywhere. Right. That's not fun. Oh, but since we're talking about mm. um, supporting the official release, have have we seen the new toys by or oh, the new Equestrial toys from? Hasbro, <laughs> and the you mean the McDonald's no, 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 ones? Not the McDonald's one. The Equestria Girls Tree toys, and most specifically, Flash, Human Flash. I need to Google this. Oh yeah. yes, I've seen it's, that. I think I don't. I have. I think I haven't. But if it has to do with Flash Sentry, I want me some. <laughs> um, let's just say that. <laughs> I like Flash Sentry. I don't have anything yeah, against okay. that. Well, here's guy. the thing, James. Um, in show, he's well built. Like he's just normal skinny guy, but in toy form, oh my god, they injected him with steroids. <laughs> they gave him abs. <laughs> they went. They, they, gave they him went abs the, of the, steel. The, they went the uh, the three hundred <laughs> route and painted them with, with a marker. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Next up, they give him a thick Austrian <laughs> accent. I am Flash Sentry, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely hilarious. The hatred that this fandom has for, for Flash Sentry is just so funny. Oh, boy. I, I... But that's because so he stole funny. everyone's waifu. He stole Twilight <laughs> from everyone. If I had a penny for every time. You know, honestly speaking, uh, I'm in, I am neutral with Flash. He, He's just a character in a show, and your pony waifu is not going to be stolen by him. Um, rumors from rumors I heard that uh, they're going to ship um, fla- human flesh with uh, human twilight. So yay! Don't be afraid about your pony waifu getting stolen by flesh. Nobody. Nah, I don't know how to follow <laughs> up on that, Norman. Uh, I know how to follow up on that one. Apple Bloom! Apple Bloom! Apple Bloom! Apple Bloom. Uh, and with that, I think we take our leave because this has been going on insanely. <laughs> How long has this been going for? An hour and a half? Almost an hour and twenty? Not including mine. Yeah, and i got to prepare yeah, for my yeah. show. All right. so, uh, so anyway. Yeah. Sounds like a great so, idea. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the show at gmail.com. If you'd like to email me, links will be in the show notes. 
And also, you can reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sudibot will tweet about... Mm, I wonder, she's not been tweeting that much. Hmm. Anyway, uh, you can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I'll tweet about toys, food, and whatever tinkles my fancy. And huh, I got no idea. I've been tweeting about third year anniversary. That's fun. Yay. And James, where can the people catch you? Uh, you can go to my askmovieslate.tumblr.com Tumblr. That's where I am most active mostly uh, nowadays. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Ro? You can find me at reliciousgalley.tumblr.com or my deviant reliciousdeviantart.com or my Twitter, relicious underscore art. I tweet about oh, pretty much words of wisdom, whatever comes to my okay, mind. Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Which is never, so it's okay if you don't want to get spammed. Uh, you're not even following me on, t- on Twitter. <laughs> I don't want to waste oh, my time. Oh, this is mean. This is mean. <laughs> <laughs> and like and where can they find you? You can find me on the Twitters at Very Lichen. And you will also find my show, Lichen Dees Beats, on com. Thank you, my friend. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. And yes, people do like the do do give us good ratings on iTunes and also so do give us a like and faith on the YouTubes. Those things will help us a lot. Those things will help us a lot. And if you don't do it now, we will kidnap your puppies. Why? You've been warned. Because we there will evil. be no kidnapping. Yeah, puppies. no, we don't do that. We kidnap puppies. We just don't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been a Spanish person. I love potatoes. And I am like it. And we promise you there won't be any kidnappings of puppies. Yeah, that's it. Deceive them. Make them believe that they are not going to lose their puppies. I will see you next week. Bye-bye. 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 Keep your doors locked, guys. Keep your <laughs> doors locked. <laughs> James wrote Puffy. Oh, I will leave the. I will let the others make uh, questions before I do any of mine. All right, crystal clear on my end. Puffy, hello, Puffy. Um, okay. Um, I don't know what to say. It, 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 it's a lot of information that I didn't think I would get. <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> brain is still full. I blame school. <laughs> Kids, cool. don't go to school. It's not no. necessary. Okay, no, like no, 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 no. Don't Stay listen to what Puffy's saying. She's just being bitter <laughs> about it. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> don't PSA, worry, I like school. I PSA. like school. That's fine. Bro, you okay? Sorry. What happened? I just hope then such a, a tab popped up and music started playing like, Jesus Christ. That's not a word. That blocker's not working anymore. What the hell? Wow. That almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> No, I was looking at him and he was like, oh my god, I was looking away, I don't need to get knife. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> Doesn't scare me that more because that happens way too often. And this is all sudden and loud, Jesus. So yeah. You can find me in the hospital <laughs> in the next five minutes if this pops right. up again.